testosterone is, you know, classified as a steroid, you know, it is, a, you know, uh, known as a, you know, anabolic androgenic steroid, um, you know, all sex hormones are steroids, but yes, testosterone is a, is a steroid. Um, and so it does kind of get lumped into the, you know, you know, do you use steroids, um, even though it's used, you know, primarily as a therapeutic agent? Actually, yes, there's actually a lot more um, out there um, that is is legal other than just testosterone. So, um, you know, obviously testosterone um, is the base, meaning uh, testosterone should always be used, um, but in conjunction sometimes with other um, you know, uh, steroids and some, a lot of these steroids that are, um, you know, typically used in like bodybuilding and athletes, um, that are, um, typically thought of as illegal actually are legal, um, provided you have a prescription for it. So, um, you know, there's a, a large number that are legal. Um, Danazole is a common one that's typically used more in women, but, um, is, is a legal steroid. Um, uh, fluoxymesterone, um, all in, also known as halotestin, that's a uh, that's legal with a prescription. Um, mesterolone, uh, known as androviron, that's legal. Um, methyl testosterone is legal. Nandrolone, also known as uh, Deca or Deca durabolin, is legal with a prescription. Oxandrolone, also known as an anadrol, uh, that's legal with prescription and um, Stanazole, uh, also known as Winstrol, is legal with a prescription. So obviously that's quite a few. Well, I think most of that is actually cultural in the um, healthcare space. So I think it's mainly just due to doctors themselves not being comfortable prescribing them. Um, and doctors not really um, having the knowledge base, honestly, uh, to prescribe them. They, these aren't really taught in school, you know, um, and, um, you know, the, these can be prescribed for all sorts of things, wasting disease, HIV, again, uh, the danazole is used for endometriosis in women, um, you know, that they're ultimately, there's a lot of reasons why these are, um, prescribed, but again, um, there's just, I guess, a, an overriding fear of doctors in, in, at least in the United States, that of prescribing these things because they have a bad connotation because baseball players and football players are using them and abusing them. Um, of course, if they're monitored appropriately, you know, they're very safe, which is why they're FDA regulated and they're approved, you know, and, you know, we're allowed to prescribe them. So they are safe. As long as they're monitored. No, no. I mean, um, again, uh, it's it's fairly easy. So if we had a, you know, a bodybuilder that there was somebody who were using these things, you know, um, essentially illegally, um, you know, provided they met the medical criteria, we can we can actually prescribe them um, as well. So, um, you know, obviously you know, it, we would, we'd hope that they're using them, you know, appropriately, you know, but most of the time bodybuilders aren't using them appropriately. They're using them at, you know, um, doses that are incorrect or unsafe, um, you know, but, but yes, we, we can prescribe these, you know, um, we can't prescribe the ones that are illegal, like Trenbolone. You, there's no country in the world you can get prescribed Trenbolone. Um, but, uh, but obviously, um, yes, we, we just want our, our patients to be safe. If you're going to do something, we want you to do it safely.